Well, dealing with the speculation of, of my reveal um, was it was was interesting because you know in 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 this day and age you have to keep quiet about certain things because you're part of the team and you want them to be able to deliver the result in the way they want to. And I think it's pretty exciting personally, the way that they do things because it builds up the audience and, and the fans and then the release is even more extra special. I think that's pretty cool. I also like the world that it creates. It creates this kind of what if this and what if that world. You know, I love that about comics because that's always existed from like when they were just um, drawn on paper. Um, but the, I feel so good now that it's revealed and, and I feel so good about the product that, that this Hawkeye show that they put out there and the, the performances of everybody in it. And I think it's just so wonderful. Yeah, the way that Kingpin fits into, or Wilson Fisk fit, fits into the Hawkeye storyline is as far as when it comes to just story, it's after the blip and uh, it, it's been years uh, since the time in, in that, that you met him in Daredevil. And he's, because of the blip, he's lost a lot of his power. Um, businesses have gone down, people disappeared, you know, like it was just like everybody knows, it kind of, kind of upturned everybody's lives in the, in the MCU. So um, that happened and he lost some of his power. So in the in the uh, story of Hawkeye, you know, he, uh, Fisk, Fisk wants his city back. And so he feels like he's lost it a bit and he wants to, to get it back. And that's his main goal. And then and then from a performance standpoint, um, how he he hasn't changed, I don't think at all, except for in the in the series. Um, he he has more powerful he's more powerful he has more strength and he can take more physical abuse but also um it's still the same character that i worked on and established in daredevil he is based in this kind of emotional life that has a lot to do with his childhood so everything that he says everything he does is um is fueled by those events when he was a child to 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 return to the role my preparation was really just getting back to those original events that whether they be joyful or or heavier than that or you know what would happen in my life and that and that and so as an actor I try to 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 see things through those through the through the lenses of those events in my life and and to help tell the story of Fisk or the story at hand um, in Hawkeye for instance that I have to mix and match events in my life that can emotionally be equivalent to what's needed to help tell the story in Hawkeye. And so basically that's what I do. So that's what I did in Daredevil. And it was basically a reconnection of those things to bring it back for Hawkeye. Well, the fight scene between um, Kate Bishop and Kingpin was a very, um, you know, it was a very technically savvy uh, execution of it. You know, it was, it was, um, you know, we did it piece by piece. There was, there was wires, there was um, uh, stunt women and men stepping in for us and then stepping out for us. And then, so us participating in, in some of it, the stunt people doing the super dangerous stuff. So it was piece by piece by piece, but it's amazing the job that these people do because it's really constructed before you even get there. And you have a little bit of a, a contribution to it on the day when you're actually shooting about it. But all of the main pit bits of the fight are are done by the stunt team and, and shot on video, um, you know, not in costume really or anything, but in a very kind of particular way. And, and so we just have to go in and repeat that in the most safest way possible with the stunt guys and stunt women stepping in um for the dangerous bits and so you know it's 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 quite fun actually it takes it's a lot of work and it's it's a lot a lot of technical stuff but you know you can still squeeze acting in there and get the the vibe uh between uh Haley and i i think was still there in the scene so um you know it's amazing H Haley was very impressive when it came to that because i'm sure this is stuff 
I'm sure she hasn't been acting for that long. And, and so she was very savvy and, and I was very impressed by her. It's really fun. And so it, it's, it's hard work, but fun. Well, because do you, in my case, I always approach a villain as if they're not a villain, that they're just misunderstood and that they're actually kind of okay. And, and, um, and have the same problems everybody else has. And it's everybody else's opinion that makes them a villain, not their own. So that's the way I approach things. And, and that makes it more interesting from the get-go because depending on what the villain's supposed to look like or what they're supposed to, what kind of villain, quote unquote, they're supposed to be in the story, what kind of story it is, you know, it helps, you know, all that influences the outcome of my characters. But the main thing is I approach them as just being a man first and then everything else is based on that emotional life of the man. I think Kingpin resonates with the fans because he does have this kind of big, kind of boisterous feeling about him from the comics of days ago, uh, of years ago. And I think that, but yet he's still, he's still based, he's still grounded by an emotional life. And I think that keeps him as a complicated character. He has this emotional life, yet he's, you know, he's he's big, big and he's strong. And I think the combination of those two things um, make him a fascinating character. I I had comic books when I was a young boy. Yeah, I had comic books, and and but I didn't. I wasn't like some of my friends who had hundreds of them and collected them and stuff like that. I didn't do that, but I. I had a couple of Marvel heroes and other heroes too, from other companies, and um, they were my guys. Like the Marvel guys were Spider-Man, Captain America, Punisher, and Daredevil. Those were my guys. And in in Punisher, Daredevil, and in and um, Spider-Man, Fisk was in all of those, so I knew of Fisk. And then, um, so I always liked the. I guess, uh, you know, Spider-Man and Captain America were my lighter kind of not so dark superheroes, you know, although their stories were quite intense. And then the rest were even on the, the DC side, I, I went for all the darker guys. So um, it was, uh, yeah, so I was, but I wasn't a collector. Well, I, I, I think it's the same way that you know, everybody has a different different taste in what they um, want as their entertainment or what they read or what they watch. And I think that when it, I think similar to crime novels and, you know, or, you know, regular science fiction or fantasy stuff, I think that, I think the comics and I think these movies have a lot to do with people you know seeking adventure in their life and these movies are adventures and um the it's it's exciting to live through a character that is beyond yourself and i think that that's always the main attraction i think early on you know with pulp fiction writers back in the day when they would write like crime noir kind of novels and stuff like that and old western novels and stuff People were, able to live, people were able to live vicariously through these darker, more scary and more exciting lives. And I think it's the same thing that's happening today with um, all of Marvel's films in the MCU.